Yeah, I, a lot of the theoretical early ideas were around astronauts living in caves on the Moon and Mars. But if you can take that material because of its uh, its strength in shielding from radiation and have them not live in a cave but live in a, a proper domain, that's that's going to be a lot more enjoyable, I'm sure, for people. Uh, but what about the airtight factor? How can you really make sure it's completely sealed? You know, for, for people who've seen the Matt Damon Martian movie everyone remembers the bit where the, the hab blows up and he, he has to sort of get that plastic sheeting to make it mm. shielded and and i know i was uh, a lot of people worried like it's not gonna stay intact he's he's obviously gonna implode when it pops um so how, how can these habitats keep all the all the danger of, of air escape out yeah there it, you know it's i think that on a, in a mars context the first reason or rationale why we would not want a, a regolith based, regolith based structures or shells to be the primary uh, pressurization layer or bladder or restraint layer is because it contains toxic perchlorates, which the astronauts should not interface with. Secondary to that, I mean, regolith is materially porous. Depending on what your deposition technology is, um, it's questionable whether you can actually create that airtight um, barrier that, that we need to contain pressure on the inside. And so there are multiple technologies and I guess you could say ways that we're considering how to create that pressurized interior. Um, I personally believe that multiple redundant systems are necessary to actually create that enclosure. 